guys, how's it going? Rowan here, bringing you your next instalment of Fresh Take. In this week's episode, we're going to be looking at pecan pie, one of my absolute favourite desserts of all time. It's going to take us about four hours in total to make, because we're going to make the pastry. I'm going to talk you through it. We're going to make a flaky, rough pastry instead of a sweet pastry. So we're going to start off with 300 grams of plain flour, 200 grams of unsalted butter and then 100 grams of cold water it's a 3 to 1 ratio so it's easy to remember and you can do it in any quantity you like we're just going to make enough here for one tart case and then we've also got about one teaspoon of salt which is just there to season the pastry looking at it now it might be two teaspoons of salt We're just going to start off by putting the flour into a large bowl. I'm using a freestanding mixer for this. Ideally you want a food processor. And we're going to add the cold diced butter to this. The idea here is that we're going to basically cut the butter through all the flour. I'm going to use the whisk attachment instead of a dough hook or the K paddle. Or you can just do this by hand just hack at it with some knives and it will give you the same result as you can see the butter has been cut up into kind of pea sized pieces that's what we want we want there to still be a few pieces of butter throughout the pastry because it will help with the flaky layers because as the pastry cooks in the oven the butter melts leaving air pockets that give that nice flaky layer into it so we've added the water slowly to the pastry and it's all come together. You want to do this quite quickly as not to overwork the dough at this stage. We're going to tip it out onto a floured surface. And we're just going to work it a little bit, bring it all together. going to work it into a disc about the size of a large plate make sure you knock over everything that's around you and maybe about a centimeter two centimeters thick and we're going to wrap it and put it in the fridge for at least two hours when working with pastry you want to keep it as cold as possible so the ingredients you start with want to be fridge temperature and then when you come out to rolling the dough, you want that at fridge temperature and as cold as possible as well. It just keeps the butter at a nice temperature and when you cook it, it's not all gonna fall apart on you. So we're just gonna roll out this pastry. We want an ideal thickness of about two millimeters, so about the thickness of a pound coin. And we'll make sure that your surface is well floured for this or else your pastry is gonna stick confession time this is actually my second attempt at rolling out the pastry it completely stuck the first time doing this you thought i would have learnt after years of pastry training so we're using a 10 inch tart tin here obviously you can see we've got plenty of pastry here so you can use a bigger tart tin if you want to mine's loose bottom it's completely up to you what you have i just find loose bottoms way easier to get the final product out I like using a rolling pin just to lift it up and over the tin and we're just going to nicely fold it in to the edges there. So as I said before we're making a flaky pastry as opposed to a sweet pastry or a pat sucre. It's just because the filling's so sweet so it just helps balance everything out. And then we're going to cut around the edge. How you do this is completely up to you. If you want a more refined finish on your pastry shell you can leave a bit of excess on it and then trim it once it's baked or you can leave a bit of excess and crimp the edges I'm gonna leave it quite rustic for now just here to show you the very basics of the pastry and we're gonna chill it for about 30 minutes to keep that butter nice and cold so this next bit we're gonna work quite quickly with to make sure everything's still at fridge temperature we're just gonna weigh down the pastry with baking beans if you don't have baking beans we can use uh, rice works well 
I've even known that coins can work quite well for this. It's called blind baking. So we're just weighing down the pastry so it doesn't puff up as we bake it. So it's got a nice flat base to it. We've preheated the oven to 190 degrees. Making sure that the baking beans cover the whole base. And we're going to bake it for about 25 minutes to start with. After that 25 minutes, we're going to take out the baking beans. This is completely optional. I'm going to coat the base with egg wash. It's just going to help seal it for when we put the pecan filling in. Because everyone knows no one likes a soggy bottom on their pies. And then we're going to bake it for a further seven to ten minutes just to get a light golden color on it so it's at this stage that you can trim that pastry to give it a nice flush finish if you desire and then we're just going to sit it to one side to chill while we make the pecan filling so i'm putting a slight twist on the traditional pecan pie here we're going to be putting orange and grapefruit and whiskey through the pecan mix so we're going to start off with 150 grams of sugar, 155 grams of maple syrup, and I've also mixed in 170 grams of golden syrup there as well. We've got the two tablespoons of whiskey. I've actually used a fireball whiskey here. It's got a little cinnamon kick to it, which will be nice in the pecan mix. We've got two teaspoons of table salt just to season it. 60 grams of unsalted butter. three eggs, you've got two teaspoons of vanilla extract or vanilla essence if you're fancy and you've got vanilla pods kicking around, whack one of them in. We've got the 275 grams of pecans, this is where I mix it up, we've got two tablespoons of, that's actually homemade grapefruit marmalade, and then the zest of one orange. So to start this, we're going to take a saucepan. We're going to add our sugar. We're going to add more sugar with the maple syrup and golden syrup. To save time, you can just weigh this straight into the saucepan. We're going to add the whiskey. And then the salt and we're going to put this on the hob and bring it to a rapid boil and then take it off to cool down whilst it's cooling down we're going to dice up the butter and add that whisking it in to emulsify And then we're going to leave it to completely cool down for probably about half an hour, 40 minutes. You'll get a thick syrupy mixture, which we're going to add the eggs to. You can probably understand the importance of having this mixture cold when you add the eggs. So if you add it while it's hot, the eggs are just going to cook. Just so you guys know, if you want to take this professionally, this is the speed of whisking that's required. This isn't fast forwarded, it's just taken me seven years to get this fast. And then we're ready for the pecans. Also gonna add in the orange zest at this stage. Our vanilla extract.
and our two tablespoons of marmalade. You can obviously use orange marmalade if you don't have any grapefruit marmalade. Mix all that together. Even more super speedy mixing. I've taken the inspiration for this recipe from the Tartine cookbook. They actually use kumquats. It's a great cookbook for any pastry lovers. Crazy sticky mix. Remembering I didn't have enough pecans to start with, so I'm actually going to need all these pecans from the backdrop. We're going to take our cooled down tart tin from earlier. I'm going to add the pecan filling. Realising at this stage that the mix that I've made literally fills it to the very brim. But don't worry, the mix doesn't expand or anything when you bake it, so you want it right up to the very rim. And we're going to bake this in a preheated 180 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. You want it so there's the slightest wobble left on it. And that's it as easy as pie. Let it cool down a little bit and take a slice. Golden caramelized custardy teeth rotting. It's a thing of absolute beauty. The grapefruit just cuts through the sweetness so it's not quite as rich as usual. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Rum and Rolo, and also like, comment, share, and subscribe to these videos. Catch you next time. This has been Fresh Take.